Yes, I'm Omar. Today we are going to see how to use the trains and subways in Tokyo. As a Japanese from Tokyo, I'm gonna share how to actually use them and five useful tips so you can use them smoothly by yourself. Now, let's get started. So first of all, we are going to see how actually to use the trains and subways in Tokyo. I divided it into three steps and let's say that we are at Tokyo Station now and we want to go to Tokyo Sky Tree. Now let's see each step. Number one, searching and deciding your route. What you have to do first is always searching and deciding the route for your destination. Actually, if you use the trains in Tokyo, often there are lots of ways to get to your destination. That's because quite many train lines and stations are tightly stuffed in the area and the trains can't often. Depending on the time, even the best way could change like every 3 minutes. That's why we Japanese people first search and decide the route. Even when we are going to the place we've been to many times. So how do we find the best route? There are many ways to search, but my conclusion is using Google Maps. I think that's the easiest to use and the best for you. You can choose the language and you can use both its website and app. I also use it so often on a daily basis and actually my Japanese friends also do. So here, let's use Google Maps for searching the route. Like I told you, now we're at Tokyo Station and we wanna visit Tokyo Sky Tree. Now if we see the result, we can find some routes. Of course, you can choose the best route for you, but this time, let's choose the one which requires us to change the trains. It's good for the practice. Alright, so this is how to search and decide the route. And let's move on to the next step. Number 2. Buying your ticket. After deciding your route, next we'll buy the ticket. Actually, there are mainly three ways to pay for your train. Pay by ticket, prepared IC cards and the rail passes. So now we'll see each of them in detail. You can buy the ticket at the machines in the station. And the thing is that before buying it, you have to know how much your journey will cost. You can often get to know the price from the map above the ticket machine. It shows the train lines and stations and the ticket prices are written beside each station. So if you see the map and find your destination, you can get to know the fare you need to pay. For example, we can see that the train from here, Tokyo Station, to Oshiage Station, which is our goal, costs us 200 yen. But if you're not familiar with this train map, it's hard to find the price and besides that, sometimes the fare for your destination isn't written on the map. In that case, there are mainly three options. Searching somehow like using Google Maps, asking the staff near the ticket gate, or buying the cheapest one. Just choose whichever you like. But I think buying the cheapest ticket is the easiest way. And I will tell you more about that later. Anyways, now that we know the price, just select that price and insert the money. Then we can get the single ticket. After getting the ticket, just insert it into the slot, walk through the gate, and pick it up on the other side. Just be careful not to lose it, you will use it again when going out at your destination. 
By the way, even if we bought the wrong price ticket, it doesn't matter because we can always use the fair adjustment machine nearby. If you insert the wrong price ticket, it shows the difference. So just pay, get the new ticket, and insert it at the gate. That's it. Actually, using paper tickets is a bit complicated. That's why most Japanese people don't use them. Instead of them, we usually use the next one. If you stay in Tokyo for like 3 days or longer, I definitely recommend you use the prepaid card because this is the most efficient way to pay for your trains both in time and money. As for the prepaid cars that you can use in Tokyo, there are two different types, Suica and Pasmo. Actually, though these cars are issued by different companies, there's no big difference of their function. So just choose whichever you want. If you don't have any preference, just create a Suica car, which is more popular than Pasmo, and I also have been using it. Anyways, you can purchase Suica at the JR stations and Pasmo at the subway stations. So now let's get a new Suica card. You can create it at the machines in the stations. What you need to prepare beforehand is just some money. At least 1000 yen. Just make sure that the card itself costs you 500 yen as a deposit which you can refund if you return the card. Alright, we've got it! So how can we use it? Just scan it when you go in and out the ticket gate. Then the fare will be automatically calculated and withdrawn from the card. It's actually very simple. And this is why I really recommend you use Suica or Pasmo instead of paper tickets. You don't have to search the price and buy the ticket each time you use the trains. Plus, these prepaid cards often cost you less money than paper tickets. By the way, when the money is short, you can top up the cars at the machines, convenience stores, and so on. That's all for prepaid cars. The last way to pay for your train is the rail passes. They are especially for the tourists and they enable you to travel around Tokyo quite freely. For example, if you buy Tokyo Free Kid, you can get an unlimited use of all subway lines and JL lines in the central Tokyo area for one day. Actually, to be honest, many of these passes are overpriced and I personally recommend you use the paper tickets or prepaid cards. But there are many different types of passes and if you use the trains a lot of times in a short period, it might be a good idea to use them. Just so you know, Alright, that's all for this step. Number 3. Getting on the train and going to your destination. Now that we've got some way to pass through the gate, next, let's actually get on the train. According to Google Maps, today first we'll use Malnoch Line.
after going in the ticket gate, we have to find the correct platform. Just be careful that you won't board the train, which is going to the opposite direction. The electronic billboards and signs will help you to make it sure. After you got on the correct train, it's important to know when you arrive at your stop. Here, the announcements on digital displays will help you. When it comes to changing the trains, my advice is don't miss the signs and don't believe yourself too much. When you walk in the stations, there always should be some English signs often above you and you have to keep your eyes on and obey them. Please don't believe yourself too much and ignore the signs even though I can really understand that you would want to do so. That's because sometimes, even if you're walking in the right direction, you have to keep doing for a few minutes until the next sign shows up. So you would doubt if the sign was right and go back or go in another direction. But if you do that, like I used to do when I was younger, you often would lose your way and time. I'm sure. Just believe the signs, okay? But if you're still really worried about the direction, it's better to ask the station staff. After changing the trains, we are supposed to get off at Osiyage station Again, the information inside the train will let you know when to get off. Also, it's better to check out the nearest exit on Google Maps before getting off, especially if you get off at the bigger stations, because they often have a lot of different exits. Before exiting the ticket gate, if you need to pay the difference for your paper ticket or top up your prepaid card, you can use the fare adjustment machines here. You can always find them near the ticket gates at any station. Yeah, Skytree is almost there. Guys, great work! That's all for how actually to use the trains. Next, we'll see the 5 useful tips. Number 1. App for prepaid cards Actually, there are app types for the prepaid cards which are even more useful than card types and recently, I have been using only the app because if you use the apps, you can top up every time everywhere. 
So you don't need to go to the machines every time you want to top up. And also, you don't need to bring the card anymore. Plus, you don't have to pay the deposit which you need when creating the card type. The only sad thing is that there seem to be no English versions yet. But once you are done with setting the app, you don't have to use Japanese so much. By the way, if you want to use these apps, I personally recommend the Suica one, because I heard like that app works more smoothly than the Pasmo one, and I have been using the Suica app, just so you know. Number 2. Thinking nothing and buying the cheapest ticket. This tip really helps you when you don't have any prepaid cards and you have to buy the paper ticket. Like when you think it's difficult or troublesome to figure out the correct fare for your destination, just buy the cheapest one. And then just pay the difference for your ticket at the fare adjustment machine at your destination. Using this tip, you wouldn't need time for searching the correct fare and you wouldn't lose your money because of buying the wrong price ticket. It's very simple but really works. That's why before prepaid cards were invented, I used to buy the paper tickets in this way so often. Number 3. Some manners and etiquettes. There are some manners and etiquettes for using the trains in Japan and I'm gonna share the major ones here. First, before getting on the train, be careful not to block the door because it's kind of manners to line up on either side of the doors so you can let the passengers to exit before you ride the train. You can get to know where to line up if you see the markings near the yellow line. After getting on the train, avoid talking loudly and avoid talking on the phone because Japanese people tend to think those behaviors may disturb other passengers. Also, eating is considered inappropriate and you shouldn't do that in the train. But as an exception, on long distance trains or the bullet trains called Shinkansen, you can eat and drink, and actually there's some special bento boxes, especially for eating inside Shinkansen. Number 4. Special trains and train cars In Tokyo, there are some trains and train cars that you need to be careful about riding, and I will share the three of them. Rapid trains, green cars, and women only cars. Maybe you don't feel rapid trains are so special, but sometimes the trains in Tokyo have different types of rapid, like JR Chuo line, which has five types. So sometimes it's a bit confusing and I just want you to make sure that your train will stop at your destination. As for green cars, they are like business class cars and you need to pay the additional fee to get on. And you can often find them in the long distance trains. Finally, during the rush hour in the morning, you can sometimes find a pink labeled car. It's a women only car and literally only women can ride that car. Even if a man wrongly got on the car, he wouldn't get arrested but he definitely would get super cold stares. So if you are a man living in Tokyo, I really don't recommend you dash into the train in the morning. Number 5. Using both right and wrong exits. It's often hard to find the right exit, I mean the nearest exit for your destination. In that case, just escape from the random exit around you and then head for your destination using Google Maps. Sometimes that's much faster than trying to find out the right exit. But the thing is, 
that this way sometimes takes you more time than searching and figuring out the right exit. So actually it really depends. But in my experience, if the station is the bigger one, it's often much better to stop walking to search and find the right exit. Because at the big stations, the distance between your destination and the wrong exit tend to be longer and taking the wrong exit can often cost you much energy and time. That's why when you feel it difficult to find the nearest exit at the big stations, I recommend you ask the staffs as soon as possible. Use both right and wrong exits wisely depending on the situation. So guys, how was the train guide? I think it's true that the train system in Tokyo is complicated and sometimes overwhelming. But once you get accustomed to it, the trains are very useful and thanks to them, you can go almost everywhere in Tokyo without any other transportation. So I really hope this video will help you and have a great train travel! Now this is the end of the video, thank you for watching! So see you next time. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. In this channel, I'm gonna share some tips for you guys to live a holiday life in Japan, especially in Tokyo, and I'll upload at least one video on weekends every two weeks. Hope to see you guys soon in the next video. Tell it up!